Hello. Hello and welcome again to Wolf's Land. Uh, this is me, Seven Wise Wolf, and well, I know I've been gone for quite some time, and well, uh, I found out I actually have some old videos that I never posted yet. So, um, yeah, sorry for putting them late. I will have my explanations when I get to the new videos. So, uh, for now. Let's carry on. Hello again. Hello, hello, hello. As always, this is Seven Wise Wolf here at Wolf's Land. And what an episode do we have today? Mm, mm, mm. Well, first off, we are here in our little nether tunnel we have created here. Uh, just as I promised last episode, I was going to count out the blocks and connect us up to the iron farm. So now we have. And also, in addition, I went in ahead and moved up our home portal. Because used to. Let me get over here. Ah, okay. Used to, we had it down here. Open and vulnerable. So. What I went ahead and did, well, ooh, there we go. What I went ahead and did was move it up here, so, well, make it less vulnerable for the gas to get out, for the gas to get at it, and make it a little bit more secure, a little bit more arid, and actually makes it a lot more better when it comes to travel. Mm, mm, mm. Travel, travel, travel. So. First on our agenda today, I know most of you are going to be itching to get back over to that iron farm, but we have, to, but yet, there's one bit of automation we need to tackle first. Well, for the first thing we need to tackle is going to be ice. Now, we have, uh, since our base is up in a little bit of a... Um, mountain biome we have the advantage of making ice up here now I have wanted to make ice for a while for many pro upcoming projects and I went ahead and made a small little ice farm here that I went ahead and already took apart to build this but there's a problem let me show you. It's right up here, and voila. Yep, pretty confusing, isn't it? I have been trying to wrap my head around this myself for a while. But apparently, only this block will freeze. None of the rest of these water blocks will freeze. But this one however will make ice but only this one which makes it a real pain in my backside so I have been deliberating on what I should do now one of the things I think happened is because I carved this area out so somehow the game must think that those w other water blocks have to be inside the mountain somehow although uh, if I can get up here so somehow it must think that all this water is inside the mountain and therefore not freezable which there's snow here, so can somebody please explain to me how that is? Seriously, can can they explain? Is this one freezes, but these don't? I just I, hmm, I just don't I just can't understand. 
hungry. So, what? Mm. So, one of my plans is I'm going to tear apart this build and then put it over here. Now, I do know that it's not really, but a good way to solve all my problems, but, uh, I kind of don't know what to do. I honestly do not know what to do with this one. It is a conundrum. Very much so. Alright, well then, for all of you, I... Well, for right now, I'm going to get busy tearing this thing apart. And I will see you once it's torn apart. And it's done. Yes. Okay, so. Uh, here's what I'm thinking. Well, first off, I, I do not want this system to think that's in inside of a mountain again. So, I went ahead and built this built this platform up. Hopefully, although, hmm. You know, I forgot to check. Let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Default. Okay. So, all of this is still under the mountain terrain, and hopefully it is high enough for freezing water. Is I'm really getting tired of this. Ugh, I'm getting tired. Is that should have been frozen water there too? No. Alright, well, here's my plan. My plan is to have pistons in a row and use this platform under here. I'll probably make a little hole right there. Make a hopper clock underneath this and program it out from there. Yeah, I think that should be enough. Hmm. Well, time for me to get cracking. What is this? What is this? Oh, man. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. What is this? Wow. Okay. Well, I've got this hooked up and had to go for lunch real quick. And, uh, oh man, I've only been gone for about an hour and. What? Th th this one. Oh man. This thing's efficient. Oh man, this thing's efficient. That piston's already gotten up to its maximum push value. Oh boy, oh boy. Well, I might as well. Ooh, wow. Freezing. Mm, mm, mm. Oh well. Ooh, man, this thing's efficient. All right. Well, you're probably going to be wondering how. What am I click? What that sound is, and how I'm timing this. So, why don't we go down the stairs, and I'll show you. Here we are. All right. Well, first off, I went and hit. In order to power the pistons from under, I'm just using a very simple method to power all of them. Whoa! Um. Mm. Eh. Uh -oh. Broke that. There we go. Mm. Ah. <laughs> that was an accident. Okay. No. Alright, so down here is the magic. Okay. First off, I wanted something a little bit spacious, so I went ahead with a, uh, a possible with a uh, etho uh, with an etho hopper clock version, but uh, I kind of modified it. 
well, actually, it was a modification found. But I found out that if this, uh, sorry, if this was over here, and this stays on, but that one powers off, this piston still will not turn on until you put a block to update this. Which is really annoying, which actually you almost saw right there. You saw that there was a delay between this piston, uh, between this, uh, sorry, between this, uh, piston depowering and that one moving this block over. That is be, yep, see, you saw it right then again. It took a second. The reason why is because it's not updating so I went ahead and built uh, I don't know if you can see it this little clock right here with two pistons these two pistons once they're activated are updating these pistons see I had to update the piston to make sure it knows to activate thereby having the clock now I guess I wouldn't have this problem if I did it the original Etho Hopper clock design, but uh, I just wanted to get this one working for so eh either way. So uh, I turned that I use a dropper with a uh, detector to turn the clock's motion into a coherent movement that will only fire that will only fire once actually technically twice in a row per clock but yeah the twice doesn't really hurt anything uh, to activate this instead of having it activate for a long duration and then deactivate for a long duration this setup creates a lot, seems to create a lot more ice. And, considering how much ice I've already gotten in just about an hour, woohoo, this really makes me happy. And also, another part that makes me happy is if you come over here, this base area isn't even completed I mean look at how much space I still have left in this platform so what I'm thinking about is I'm thinking about expanding it over here build another section of that that way we have two ice ice uh, I guess you could say icebergs colliding into here and then under here, I'll build a platform that will build the ice up into a tower. I think that would be the most simplest way to go about it. How about you? Well, actually, I should just put say, uh, if you think that's a good idea or not, post it in the comments. I'll read it later. And if you have any suggestions for after I'm done with the video, uh, I'll pro I'll if I like them I'll probably up work uh, do them in the next video but first I think I'll go ahead and get to work with doing this section second section and the middle section as well so uh yeah let me start to put that down and well figure out how I'm going to do this first off I think I'm going to have the sec instead of building two clocks I think I'm just going to have the second section filter from that clock yeah I think that's what I'll uh, oh my this just seems embarrassing okay well first off I went ahead and built the platform for the second part of the ice maker. 
Now, the one thing with this, well, I haven't hooked up anything here yet because I'm going to hook it up after I connect it with this here. Now, the main thing, now, I'm not, don't think I'll stretch it from body to body. I think I'll leave a two block gap between the tower of ice and the two machines is seriously concerning it how I I just I just trimmed all the ice and it's starting to go again oh man this is going to be one hard battle alright well and then I found a different problem now uh, I was thinking of using detectors to power pistons since redstone underneath pistons won't do it because we're trying to get the ice go, go up. Yeah, I found a problem over here. See, whenever I put a rail next to... Uh-oh. I ran out of rails. Next to... Well, it's not... Seriously, I talk about it, and then it just doesn't do it. Oh, there we go. See, I can't get it to stop doing that. Either way. Now, I have a few thoughts about how to fix that, but then I came to this. It... Ooh, what? Hmm. I was pretty sure it didn't power the whole thing. You know what? If it's going to want to lay like that, it seems to want to go east and west, is how it wants to lay. Hmm. The length of this isn't... Ooh, I have an idea. Oh. Uh, as, ah, there we go. Not long enough. Hmm, powering this thing is going to be murder. Hmm. Okay, now I have two pos two thoughts about possibly powering pistons here. One thought that I was coming up with concerning that would be difficult would be this. But tripwire only powers. Unfortunately, it doesn't change state for the detector to detect it. But for this. Oh. Yeah, see. And it will only power one piston. So any change in state. Ten. We're wanting this to be ten or twelve. Ten blocks. Ten blocks. Let me I have an idea. Let's try. Uh, just give me a second, and I'll be right back. Alright. Alright, so I went ahead and just made a little bit of a rough draft of my thought. Doesn't get to the... Yeah, I already knew that was going to happen from the beginning. <sighs> Wait a minute. Well, mm hmm. Yeah. I wasn't even able to get halfway done. I grossly underestimated how many of these things I needed. 
very much grossly underestimated. Hmm. Very interesting. What if I use pistons instead of using this setup? It might be a lot less costly. Hmm. Let me get some of these observers and try it out. <laughs> I think I did it. I think I got it. Yes. Yes, this is the ultimate. Okay, so in order to cut down on supplies, since I have an iron farm, pistons are a lot cheaper to build than the detectors. So, and also that still utilizes this. Watch this. Watch this. Okay. Ha. So now I have both of them running. Let's see, what is the maximum pulse Oh, even 16. still, then that, that still works just fine, because that one's going to be depowered until this activates, and then that will also run on to a delay activating the other far, the other side of the ice. Ooh. Ha ha. Yeah, I think this will work a lot better and be more resource efficient. Yes, yes, this will work a lot better. Now I just gotta build it. Yeah, I just gotta build it, for real. I might have to change out the construction. What the? Look at that! Oh, man. That's probably the Enderman right there. That's probably the Enderman right there. They can take... They can take those blocks too. Oh, man. What in this world can Endermen not take? They're destroying my base one block at a time. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, let me go to bed first. Oh, mm. All right. <laughs> All right, now that I'm back. Uh, okay, let's see here. Well, uh, oh, yes, yes. I just finished hooking up uh, this side of the system down here. And boy, did it take a lot of resources. I finished and only had one piston left. Ooh. Missed that. Alright. Only had one piston left and 22 observers, but I'm out of quartz now, so I'm gonna have to get more quartz, but uh, wow. Hmm. This really works. Okay, so I went ahead and hooked up from the main clock here and went ahead and routed it through here with a significant delay and this is powering both the pistons uh, for the ice bed I guess you could call it Ooh. for the ice bed and then also for the ice maker itself now I just have to hook up the piece of the ice maker out here that pushes the ice that way onto the ice bed. Uh, I'm going to have to do that. Well, also right after I fin, but uh, right after I finished this, I went AFK, had some breakfast, walked the dog. So let's see what type of may, what type of ice. Do we have... Oh my. 
Look at that. That's quite a bit of ice. Quite a bit of ice indeed. Mm -mm -mm. So we've already got almost one full section of ice, not to mention this area over here. Alright. Now we just have to focus on getting that online. Which all it needs left is the upper section and... And also the water added. So let me get to that and I'll be right back. Alright. Woo! That ice is up quickly. Oh boy. We got this amount in all... And I just hooked it up. Woo! Wow. All right. So now both sides of this machine are fully functional. So we have a ten. All right. So for the pistons, we have a ten by twelve area, and each of those will be able to. Push 12 blocks. Oh my. This is losing my mind here. Alright, let me see here. Wow, that is 1,440 blocks. So, oh, just a small area. Once it's all filled up, will give us 100 in. Uh, sorry, 1,440 blocks. Well, that will equal 120 stacks. Oh my. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I see it from down here. Oh. Oh. Look at this. A solid. Oh, so wait. A what? Huh. That's weird. This froze once, but. Freeze again. Huh. This corner's odd. Very odd. Oh well. Everything else is freezing just fine. Hmm. Well, let me take a look underneath. See if there's anything different about that corner. I don't think that was affecting it, but... Eh. Whoa. Talk about a lag spike. <laughs> now to turn this ice into something a little more usable. I don't think I'll be getting into the blue eyes for a little while, but ah, man, all that just for that amount of oh boy, packed ice. Uh, at least they allow us to craft it these days, but man, it takes a lot of ice to craft. Considering how bit how much ice I actually got. Oh, it's more ice than I had before. <laughs> 